Okay, now that we ran the uh, dyno there, uh, I'm reading the dyno sheet, and I'm going to answer a few questions before you even ask them. The first thing that's probably going to pop up into people's minds is the air-fuel ratio if you looked at the dyno sheet. And of course, it's, uh, it's pretty rich, uh, running from 11.3 to 1, and it never gets leaner than 12.3 to 1. Now, this is actually only off of the back carburetor. Teaser Racing Engines is a real race engine shop. They aren't set up to run this old uh, dual carburetor 60s vintage stuff. And so on the front carburetor, it actually ran, I think, up to like 13.8, like 13.5. So it got pretty lean on that front carburetor. And then this rear carburetor was reading a little bit rich. So I'm not sure exactly, you know, if it was dialed in, you know, medium range or whatever, but we used the factory jets in the factory carburetors, uh, used the factory dual points distributor, used the factory uh, eight degrees before top dead center initial timing on it. And so we did try to add a little bit of timing and it didn't like it. Uh, and then this last run, we added 20% uh, 110 octane to the 91 non-oxy we were running and it smoothed out the torque curve. So it didn't add any, uh, any torque. In fact, I think the best run we had was before this with just a couple, couple pound feet more of torque and I think the horsepower is about the same, uh, but it did smooth things out so we didn't have any kind of bouncing in that torque curve like we did before. Um, a couple of the things, maybe we could have hunted a little bit more power, could have added a little more 110 octane fuel, uh, could have advanced the timing then maybe a little bit, um, you know, could have run a Pertronics electronic ignition with it. Uh, obviously, this is basically net horsepower, not gross on this one. Had the generator spinning, we were using the, the water pump of the, the engine, uh, we were using the factory dual points distributor. Uh, we were using uh, some Hedman streetcar headers on it. And even though they weren't the factory headers, which were those big cast iron manifolds <laughs> that Ford used to circumvent NASCAR rules back in the early 60s on the 406 and then the 427, uh, I really doubt those Hedman headers, uh, the mid-link truck headers, flowed any better than the original cast iron uh, headers that came with uh, the engine. So really what you see is what you get. This isn't, you know, this isn't really a gross horsepower scenario. This is what these 427s really did make in terms of power in kind of a net capacity. Um, oil temperature we're running about 230. We were controlling the water temperature with the dyno uh, rather than with a thermostat or something like that. So we were running 165 there. Um, one issue we did have, the oil pressure safety relief valve is in the back of the block on these 427s and the builder misinterpreted something I said and so he had that blocked off so it was not um, venting oil pressure I should say uh, as it climbed up. The Melling high pressure pump that was on this which is kind of an OEM replacement pump uh, did have a bypass spring in it. Uh, that was bypassing at 125 PSI. If we would have had a little bit lower oil pressure, because we're we're up there at that 125, 130 PSI, which is you know where the oil filters are rated for like blowout capacity. If we were down there more like 100 PSI or something, we probably would have picked up you know another five or ten horsepower or something like that. But this wasn't uh, me seeing just how much power I could stretch out of this you know, this vintage engine. This was about making sure that this engine, which hadn't run in 45 years, was put together well. It was breaking itself in, uh, breaking in the right way. And that it, when I put it into the Mustang, then I wouldn't have to pull it back out because something major was wrong with it. Uh, so I was pretty happy with the result. Obviously, you know, part of me wanted to go and, and really tune this thing in and uh, you know, adjust the timing on the cam and adjust the timing on the engine, add some more race fuel, change the jetting on the carbs, really tune this thing in. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's just a daily driver street engine. Um, obviously, I would have liked to pull the dyno down a little bit lower in the RPM to kind of prove that the 427, it's not that high strung, you know, high RPM only engine that 
a lot of people make it out to be. It actually has uh, plenty of low end torque. In fact, if you if you read the, the the interviews and stuff of people from back in the 60s who ran this engine at the 24 hours of Le Mans in the GT40, they said you could lug these things down to 1400 RPM. And that's about what I've seen with the factory uh, solid lifter flat tappet cam, uh, the double A cam that was installed from the factory in these uh, stock street 427s. It'll it'll pull down to 1400. Below that, you know, it doesn't even like 1400, but it'll go down there. Um, it does have big block torque. So um, I, I hope that clears some stuff up for people. I don't know if folks will have any questions. You can always ask in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, but I just really wanted to kind of redo this video. It's one that I made like 10 years ago and I didn't edit it or anything. And I wanted to do a little more justice to the engine. You know, was, my dad raced this thing back in the 60s and I wanted to show it the proper respect and, and get a video worthy of it. It would be more interesting than, than the original video I had out. So I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope you learned some things or got some information that you wanted. So uh, have a good one.